Call this meeting of Lima City Council to order. We'll begin tonight's meeting with the invocation by Councillor Tevin, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Lord, please help guide us as we make decisions to benefit those that we represent in the City of Lima and uh, help keep all of the children who will be going trick-or-treating next week safe and uh, drivers aware of their presence. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'll entertain a motion to appoint Law Director Tony Geiger as acting clerk until the clerk, Sally Clemens, arrives. So second. moved. Motion in the second. As stated, all those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the motion carries. Point of order, Mr. Geiger, do I need to uh, rescind that appointment when she does arrive? or No. Okay. No. I just, you, you made the motion. I don't want correctly. you two going at it. <laughs> okay. I will gladly yield. <laughs> Mr. Clerk, would you please call the roll? Uh, Mr. Tebbin. Here. Ms. Adams. Here. Mr. Glenn. Here. Ms. Miles. Here. Mr. Nixon. Here. Mr. Gordon. Here. Mr. McLean. Here. And Mr. Lowe. Here. There are no scheduled public hearings under privilege of the floor. First, we have Bob. We need a motion to amend the agenda. You're right. Is there a motion to amend, amend the agenda? So moved. Mr. So moved. No, we need a motion. Mr. McLean. Mr. President. I'd like to add Andy Johnson for, to privilege of the floor for the health care audit. Second. The motion of the second is to amend tonight's agenda by adding Andy Johnson under privilege of the floor. Is there any discussion? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the motion carries. Privilege of the floor. First we have Bob Horton, and I'll remind both speakers this evening that privilege of the floor rules allow for three minutes for comments. Okay, thank you. Thank you this evening. For privilege of the floor, uh, about in January of this year, we had uh, Councilor Gordon came, <coughs> came on board as Councilor. And uh, his word really got my attention. Be good, let us be good to one another. So if you will indulge me, I'd just like to um, expound on that just for a little bit of uh, counsel and rest of uh, counsel. Expounding, I say, uh, let us uh, be good to one another uh, if, if at all possible, if at all possible, regardless of political affiliation. Let's be good to one another. And also, let us be good to one another regardless of race, creed, a culture. Let's be good to one another. Also, let us be good to one another, regardless of our status in life, whether we're rich, poor, whether we're in the medium, of the middle class, or whatever. Let's be good to one another. And in conclusion, surprised you didn't I? In conclusion, <laughs> I want to say. Thank you to <coughs> Councillor Gordon for those words, because I use them a lot. And the great Apostle Paul tells us in Galatians 16, say, do good unto all men, especially those of the household of faith. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank, you. Thank you, Mr. Orton. Reverend Orton. Next, Andy Johnson. Thank you, gentlemen. Members of Council, Administration, Mr. Mayor. Uh, my name is Andy Johnson, and I'm a detective with the Lima City Police Department. I'm also a union representative for the Fraternal Order of Police Blue Unit. On November 2nd, members of my union began receiving notices from the City of Lima Resource Director, stating that we were required to send in verification information as it relates to marriage, dependence birth certificates and other documentation of cohabitation in order to verify eligibility standards for the city's health insurance plan. While we applaud the city's efforts to control our ever-growing health care cost, 
we take some issue with the lack of communication about the letter involved. The letter telling our members that they have 28 days to gather a lengthy list of documents or be removed from the health care plan is, in our opinion, somewhat heavy-handed and disrespectful. Secondly, sending this documentation to an outside agency out of this state makes me and my union brethren uncomfortable. In this day and age, documentation like this is all that is necessary to steal one's identity and wreak havoc on an individual's financial life. While the city has stated that BMI, the company that is contracted with, is bound to keep this information safe, other companies have had uh, large amounts of private data stolen from them. Home Depot and Target are just two of those large companies. Uh, many of the losses that were incurred were innocent people who were just doing what was asked of them to do with their shopping and things. Lastly, we feel that if our health insurance plan is somehow fraught with theft and deception, maybe conversations could have been held with each one of the unions uh, to audit this information in-house instead of hiring a company from out of state. Health insurance became a contract issue when premiums were added as part of our contract negotiations. Um, we're being asked to make expenditures out of our own pockets to buy the information necessary to send to these, this company. Uh, we believe that that is a contact, contract issue for discussion, not something that can be just uniformly mandated by the administration. Uh, we're asking for City Council's help in suspending this course of conduct until these issues can be addressed with each one of the unions. I uh, thank you for your time and in listening to our concerns. Thank you. Thank you. Consent calendar. Mr. President, Mr. Tabin, I move that item A of the consent calendar be received, filed, and approved, and item B be received and filed. Second. The motion and the second is to receive, file, and approve item A and to receive and file item B. Is there any discussion? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The motion carries. Communication number one. From the Director of Community Development regarding legislation to place tax assessments. Mr. President. Mr. Glenn. I move to communication number one, receive and file legislation on night agenda. Second. The motion of the second is to receive and file communication number one. Is there any discussion? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The motion carries. Communication number two. From the Finance Director regarding legislation for budget amendments for backup server and licenses. Mr. President. Mr. Tevin, I move that communication number two be received and filed. Legislation is on tonight's agenda. Second. second. The motion of the second is to receive and file communication number two. Is there any discussion? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The motion carries. Communication number three. From the finance director regarding budget amendments. Mr. President. Mr. Tevin, I move that uh, communication Number three, be received and filed. Legislation is on tonight's agenda. Second. The motion and the second is to receive and file communication number three. Is there any discussion? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The motion carries. Communication number four. From the Director of Utilities regarding legislation to enter into a consent agreement. Mr. President. Mr. McLean. I move that communication number four be received and filed. Second. The motion and the second is to receive and file communication number four. Is there any discussion? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The motion carries. Communication number five. From the Director of Utilities regarding legislation to amend the contract with MWH. Mr. President. Mr. McLean. I move that communication number five be received and filed. Second. second. The motion and the second is to receive and file communication number five. Is there any discussion? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The motion carries. Communication number six. From the Director of Utilities regarding legislation to enter into an agreement with Allen County Commissioners. Mr. President. Mr. McLean. I move that communication number six be received and filed. Second. The motion and the second is to receive and file communication number six. Is there any discussion? 
All those in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The motion carries. Communication number seven. From the Deputy Director of Utilities requesting legislation to enter into an agreement with URS engineers. Mr. President. Mr. McClain. I move the communication number seven be received and filed and authorize the law director to prepare any necessary legislation. Second. The motion and the second is to receive and file communication number seven and to authorize the law director to prepare any necessary legislation. Is there any discussion? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. Communication number eight. From the Deputy Director of Utilities requesting legislation to pay the Ohio EPA annual discharge fee. Mr. President. Mr. McClain. I move the communication number eight be received, filed, and authorize the law director to prepare any necessary legislation. Second. The motion of the second is to receive and file communication number eight and to authorize the law director to prepare the necessary legislation. Is there any discussion? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. Communication number nine. From the auditor regarding the city's natural gas bills. Mr. President. Mr. Tevin. I move that communication number nine be received and filed. Second. second. The motion and the second is to receive and file communication number nine. Is there any discussion? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The motion carries. Communication number 10. From the Ohio Division of Liquor Control regarding stock transfer to Ben Jim Enterprises, 858 West North Street. Mr. President. Mr. Lowe. I move that communication number 10 be received and filed in the clerk authorized to file with no objections to the Ohio Division of Liquor Control. Second. The motion of the second is to receive and file communication number 10 and to authorize the clerk to notify the Ohio Division of Liquor Control of no objections. Is there any discussion? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 And those opposed? The motion carries. Communication number 11. From the Ohio Division of Liquor Control regarding stock transfer to Ben Jim Enterprises, 1434 Allentown Road. Mr. President. Ms. Miles. I move that communication number 11 be received and filed and the Ohio Division of Liquor Control be notified of no objection. Second. The motion in the second is to receive and file communication number 11 and to authorize the clerk to notify the Ohio Division of Liquor Control of no objection. Is there any discussion? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The motion carries. Communication number 12. From the Convention and Visitors Bureau's annual agreement. Mr. President. Mr. Lowe. I move that communication number 12 be received and filed that the law director be authorized to prepare the necessary legislation. Second. The motion in the second is to receive and file communication number 12 and to authorize the law director to prepare the necessary legislation. Is there any discussion? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The motion carries. Communication number 13. From the Director of Community Development regarding legislation to contract with the Attorney General's office. Mr. President. Mr. Glenn. I'm new to communication number 13, receive and file legislation on night agenda. Second. The motion on the second is to receive and file communication number 13. Is there any discussion? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The motion carries. Communication number 14. From the Director of Public Works requesting legislation to amend the contract with all purpose contracting. Mr. President. Ms. Adams. I move that communication number 14 be received and filed and that the law director be authorized to prepare the necessary legislation to comply with the request. Second. The motion of the second is to receive and file communication number 14 and to authorize the law director to prepare the necessary legislation. Is there any discussion? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The motion carries. Uh, reports of officials, Mr. Phil Haynes. Good evening, council members. Um, you had asked for us to provide you a brief update on our community grant initiative, and that's why I'm here uh, this evening to share with you some highlights of that. I brought Mike Hayden with me from my staff, who certainly has more specifics of that. But I just wanted to briefly give you an update from what we did last year, and then kind of give a brief update on, in terms of what we anticipate this coming year, okay? 
Um, we wrote, uh, last year we wrote a total of, of six grants, a um, number of which were not funded, uh, but we are waiting, uh, currently we're waiting on two grants that we have not heard the results are, of. One is for a $900,000 uh, early head start grant in which we worked with LACA to write. And we had, we're um, pretty uh, uh, anticipating good results of that one. And also another grant through the Avon Foundation, which I believe is for Crossroads. $60,000. So we're awaiting the results of those two grants. This last year, we were able to provide three grant workshops for a total of 40 community agencies. We anticipated, I think, that we shared before that one of the challenges we had, we found, was that a lot of these agencies are just not prepared to write grants and to understand the, the responsibilities they have with those grants. So we've been able to train 40 40 agencies, um, um, and uh, we're, we're really pleased about that because a number of those agencies now are working with us directly one-on-one -on -one to write specific grants. Um, we have done over 60 searches looking for grants that we could bring into this community, and that's a big part of what we expect the community grant writer to do is to search and look for possible grants that we can write that would be good for this community. So I think we've, we've accomplished a lot in the first year in terms of laying the groundwork. Now the real work starts in terms of really uh, making sure that we can bring resources into this community. We do intend to continue to do, provide training. We have another training scheduled for, for January. Um, we are working on a very large um, collaborative grant and one of the things that we've realized is that we really need to bring a lot of organizations together to work together on some of these grants because we can't continue to work in silos anymore. And a lot of these grants are really requiring us to look at what collaborations are in place to address some of those grants. So we're working with a very large work de workforce development grant that we will be applying and hoping to be selected by the state who will then be applying to the federal government for that grant. And we hope that money will come into our community to continue to address workforce development issues in our community. We are, we are currently working with five organizations very intensely on a one-on-one -on -one situation in terms of their grants and grants that they're seeking, and the grant writer works pretty regularly with those people to make sure that they're writing good, good healthy grants. We're also anticipating that another area of need that we've developed is that of board development, and we're anticipating developing some training around board development, which I think also uh, assists with resource development. So we're, we're very optimistic for this coming year, and I think we've laid a lot of good groundwork for this coming year. But I just wanted to come and share with you a brief update in terms of what, what we're doing and how active we are right now. Okay. All right? Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Mr. President, <coughs> yes. No, ask me. Mr. Goliath. Yes, Phil. Yeah. It's, uh, what I've been doing, I've been trying to work with the Neighbor Association. I want them to get together, each group get together and point someone to come to you so they all can work together because they all gonna work together on putting one grant together in that neighborhood and uh, the workforce development was one that we was discussing about jobs and different things in there so and I appreciate your report too you know uh, see both you guys are here and explaining what's going on when you wait until the last minute we coming in now so we all know what's going on there and I hear some good things about it, you know some people talking about it and the one you're working on for LACA that's great yeah Okay, thank you. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Next is Saul Allen regarding the dreaded leaf pickup, <laughs> which is second to the dreaded snow removal. President, members of council, uh, City of Lima Public Works Department, Street Division, uh, would like to announce uh, to council that this year's schedule will be scheduling to begin the, the uh, leaf pickup the week of November 10th. Uh, on that Monday, November 10th, residents of the first, fourth, and fifth wards, once again, first, fourth, and fifth, fifth wards, are being asked to rake and pile leaves to the curb lawn, not in the street, 
not in the street, and just in case I forgot, not in the street. Uh, pickup and various other wards will occur as crews progress. A uh, few helpful hints, as always, uh, residents that do not want to wait for us to come around. These bags are available now. Uh, those residents can bag their leaves and put it out with their trash pickup, normal trash pickup day. Uh, leaf bags are available at my office at 900 South College Street and also at the Billing Collection Office at 424 North Central Avenue. Uh, residents do have, have to show some proof of residency to obtain those bags, but those bags are available now. Uh, also, uh, we're asking to, once again, not to rake into the streets. <coughs> our, our crews have equipment that uh, can, once we come into those areas, can push the leaves out into the streets and pick those leaves up at that time. A uh, couple things also that I also always like to remind people that this <coughs> is leaf pickup only. This is not limb pickup. Uh, this is not rock pickup. This is not tree pickup. Uh, a lot of times we get calls from people wondering why we bypassed a pile. If it has limbs in it, if it has large rocks in it, those piles will be bypassed. Uh, just due to the fact that our equipment is not made to pick up those items. Uh, so please be sure that uh, you also mention that to residents. And also, uh, the uh, residents can also take leaves out to the compost site. Uh, that address is 1227 East Hanthorn Road, and that can be done now as well. But once again, you do have to show some proof of residency. Once again, did I say not in the street? <laughs> and, and really, I, I, I sort of play with that a little bit, but the, the truth of the matter is the fact that if those leaves are in the street, a lot of times with the weather we're getting right now, especially heavy rains, those clog up catch basins and that's what we're starting to see right now. So that's why, you know, we really like to avoid that, that, that issue. Uh, any questions on that? Mr. President. Mr. Glenn. Yeah, so many times you can go out there to the compost. You can go one time with your water bill, your ID, or just your ID. I, I think you can go out with just your water bill, if I'm not mistaken. One time. <laughs> one time. Many times you want with leaves. I'm not sure. They're saying as many times you want with leaves. Okay, okay. I just want to make sure. Okay. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Allen. One other side note, if I can. This is also political season, and I, like I always also like to say, the city of Lima is an equal opportunity sign remover. <laughs> Uh, I think most of you who have run, have at, actually at one time or another probably have had a sign removed. Uh, I just want to remind residents and anyone running for various elections to make sure that signs are not placed in the public right of way or they will be removed. Uh, good thing with at least the street department, most of those signs that we are removing, we are holding at the street department uh, for anyone to come in and pick those signs back up until after the election's done. So, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Allen. Uh, next is Steve Cleves. Mr. President and members of council, uh, the packet I gave you contains the two top letters of uh, information that were presented to council at the time that the two job incentive payments for 2014 to date were made. Uh, there was one notification in July and one in September. If you go two pages down, you'll see a summary sheet that lists those two payments. Uh, <coughs> those two payments were for a total of $3,750 uh, thus far this year. Those account for uh, 18 jobs uh, in the city. For your information, in previous years, we had uh, two larger job incentive uh, applicants. And in those two years, uh, 
the amount of payments were uh, considerably larger. In total for the, the payments made for those two companies, uh, Kettle Creations received uh, $39,000 dollars in their uh, qualified uh, new jobs uh, increased from 9 to 128. Uh, the American Bottling Company had a, a steady uh, labor force of about 46 to 48 employees. Now the, the terms of these payments, uh, the ordinance and the rules which we follow uh, our ordinance 10913, which was last approved in 2013, extending the uh, the date of this program uh, through 2018. If you go to the second page, it begins to define this program. What this program is for is if a company locates a new company locates within the city uh, and creates a new payroll which is taxable uh, to the city. Those are what are called qualified jobs for this payroll. So the, the total of those new jobs are verified at the end of the year once the application is made and approved. And there is a schedule which will grant an incentive payment for that new payroll. The incentive payment is calculated as 50% of one half of the city's tax rate. And that payment will, would be made to that company after they completed one full year, one full tax year uh, with those jobs in effect. The, in, the intent is that those uh, jobs would remain permanent for a five-year period. That's the position. You know, we understand people come and go, but the number and the position of the job is intended to uh, require to, to be in effect for five years. There are a couple of additional features of this program. One most recently added in 2013 when the ordinance was amended. If a business within the city, but not in what is defined as a central business district, moves into the central business district, they are also eligible to apply to this uh, new, lobby, new Lima Jobs program. The central business district is defined as the railroad tracks to the north, the railroad tracks to the east, the river to the south, and Metcalf Street to the west. So just to, to clarify that again, if there is a company that is currently within the city outside of, that, outside of those boundaries and they relocate to the central downtown area, uh, they are eligible to apply for this program. Another uh, bonus is available to the applicants if 50% of their employees are residents of the city they're entitled to a 10% increase in the incentive payment I believe that that provision was uh, recommended by Councilor Glenn at the time we started this program the uh, the administration of this uh, program is by the city's director of taxation, which is myself. The information provided by the companies uh, is verified. Uh, we're verifying that through W-2 forms, tax forms. Uh, the information that the applicants provide us is considered uh, confidential, preparatory, uh, information and we don't discuss too many details about the uh, well we don't discuss any details about the individual employees and how much money they are making but we do verify those amounts with their w-2 forms
I don't think I have any additional uh, explanation of what the program is or what it's about. Uh, but if you have any questions, uh, I'd be glad to answer it. Thank you, Mr. Cleaves. Uh, for council records, there should be a motion to receive the file and put the material in the report. Okay. So moved. <laughs> second. Motion the second is to receive and file uh, Mr. Cleaves' report as the annual report for the Lyman New Jobs Program. Is there any discussion? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The motion carries. Uh, next, we have reports of committees, utilities. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, utility meeting was on October 2nd, and we were discussing um, the late fee for the water bills. Uh, we've had a lot of um, vocal people because of the amount. It was placed at $20 if you were late. And we have some people that, the low volume users, that the uh, late fee could be more than their actual bill. So we as a committee determined that we get some several option, options from the utility director and we picked one option we thought that would be the best uh, at a $10 fee or 10% of the bill and all of you have the meeting information in front of you and I would request to receive, file, and approve this. Second. Second. Motion and second is to receive, file, and approve the committee report is Submitted by Councilor McLean. Is there any discussion? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The motion carries. Safety Services Committee meeting. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, the Safety Services Committee uh, met on 10 8 of this year at 5 30 p.m. to discuss exercise equipment uh, for the police department. Everybody's received a copy of the report, and I move that. Um, that the minutes be received, filed, and approved. Second. second. Motion the second is to receive, file, and approve the committee report as submitted by Councilor Gordon. Is there any discussion? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The motion <coughs> carries. Ordinance 235-14. Levying special assessments for property maintenance code charges on premises in the city of Lyme, Ohio. Mr. President. Mr. Glenn. I move that Ordinance 235-14 be passed on its first reading. Second. The motion in the second is to pass Ordinance 235-14 on its first reading. Is there any discussion? Will the clerk call the roll? Mr. Tevin. Yes. Ms. Adams. Yes. Mr. Glenn. Yes. Mrs. Miles. Yes. Mr. Nixon. Yes. Mr. Gordon. Yes. Mr. McLean. Yes. And Mr. Lowe. Yes. Ordinance 235-14 has been passed on its first reading by an 8-0 vote. Ordinance 236-14. Levying special assessments for property maintenance code charges on premises in the city of Lyme, Ohio. Mr. President. Mr. Glenn. I move that Ordinance 236-14 be passed on its first reading. Second. The motion in the second is to pass Ordinance 236-14 on its first reading. Is there any discussion? We'll have the clerk call the roll. Mr. Tevin? Yes. Ms. Adams? Yes. Mr. Glenn? Yes. Mrs. Miles? Yes. Mr. Nixon? Yes. Mr. Gordon? Yes. Mr. McLean? Yes. And Mr. Lowe? Yes. Ordinance 236-14 has been passed on its first reading by an 8-0 to zero vote. Ordinance 237-14. Levying special assessments for property maintenance code charges on premises in the city of Lyme, Ohio. Mr. President. Mr. Glenn. I move that Ordinance 237-14 be passed on its first reading. Second. The motion on the second is to pass Ordinance 237-14 on its first reading. Is there any discussion? Have the clerk call the roll. Mr. Tevin? Yes. Ms. Adams? Yes. Mr. Glenn? Yes. Mrs. Miles? Yes. Mr. Nixon? Yes. Mr. Gordon? Yes. Mr. McLean? Yes. And Mr. Love? Yes. Ordinance 237-14 has been passed on its first reading by an 8-0 to zero vote. Ordinance 238-14. Amending the 2014 annual budget. Mr. President? Mr. Tevin, I move that Ordinance 238-14 be passed on its first reading. Second. The motion on the second is to pass Ordinance 238-14 on its first reading. Is there any discussion? Mr. President. Ms. Adams. I had an earlier discussion today with Rick Stolley because I noticed on Exhibit B, um, it said here park improvement. Uh, it, it was a final payment. It's uh, for Cook Park uh, for the restroom. 
and uh, they still have some minor things to finish um, labor wise and hopefully we will have a early spring uh, opening of that restroom at Cook Park so I wanted to thank Rick uh, Lima senior and the administration the mayor for this addition to Cook Park thank you thank you Miss Adams is there any further discussion I'll have the clerk call the roll Mr. Tevin? Yes. Ms. Adams? Yes. Mr. Glenn? Yes. Mrs. Miles? Yes. Mr. Nixon? Yes. Mr. Gordon? Yes. Mr. McLean? Yes. And Mr. Lowe? Yes. Ordinance 238-14 has been passed on its first reading by an 8-0 to zero vote. Ordinance 239-14. Accepting the amounts and rates as determined by the Budget Commission, authorizing the necessary <coughs> tax levies and certifying them to the county auditor. Mr. President? Mr. Tevin? I move that Ordinance 239-14 be passed on its first reading. Second. The motion and the second is to pass Ordinance 239-14 on its first reading. Is there any discussion? We'll have the clerk call the roll. Mr. Tevin? Yes. Ms. Adams? Yes. Mr. Glenn? Yes. Mrs. Miles? Yes. Mr. Nixon? Yes. Mr. Gordon? Yes. Mr. McLean? Yes. And Mr. Lowe? Yes. Ordinance 239-14 <laughs> has been passed on its first reading by an 8-0 to zero vote. Ordinance 240-14. Authorizing the mayor to accept and administer additional funds from the Ohio Attorney General Move the Ohio Forward Grant. Mr. President. Mr. Glenn. I move that Ordinance 240-14 be passed on its first reading. Second. The motion and the second is to pass Ordinance 240-14 on its first reading. Is there any discussion? Mr. President. Mr. Uh, McClain. I saw in the uh, previous communication that this had to be used by December 31st of this year. Correct. We have those earmarked already, the units that we. Thank you. Is there any further discussion? I'll the clerk call the roll. Mr. Tevin? Yes. Ms. Adams? Yes. Mr. Glenn? Yes. Mrs. Miles? Yes. Mr. Nixon? Yes. Mr. Gordon? Yes. Mr. McLean? Yes. And Mr. Lowe? Yes. Ordinance 240-14 has been passed on its first reading by an 8-0 to zero vote. Ordinance 241-14. Authorizing payment from the Wyoming Municipal Court Computer and Special Project Funds. Mr. President. Mr. Tevin. I move, move that Ordinance 241-14 be passed on its first reading. Second. The motion of the second is to pass Ordinance 241-14 on its first reading. Is there any discussion? Of the clerk call the roll. Mr. Tevin? Yes. Ms. Adams? Yes. Mr. Glenn? Yes. Mrs. Miles? Yes. Mr. Nixon? Yes. Mr. Gordon? Yes. Mr. McLean? Yes. And Mr. Lowe? Yes. Ordinance 241-14 has been passed on its first reading by an 8-0 to zero vote. Ordinance 242-14. Authorizing the mayor to enter into contract with Lima Cyclery and Fitness to be paid from the Safety <coughs> Service Support Fund. Mr. President. Mr. Gordon. I move that Ordinance 242-14 be passed on its first reading. Second. Second. The motion of the second is to pass Ordinance 242-14 on its first reading. Is there any discussion? Of the clerk call the roll. Mr. Tevin? Yes. Ms. Adams? Yes. Mr. Glenn? Yes. Mrs. Miles? Yes. Mr. Nixon? Yes. Mr. Gordon? Yes. Mr. McClain? Yes. And Mr. Love? Yes. Ordinance 242-14 has been passed on its first reading by an 8-0 to zero vote. Ordinance 243-14. Authorizing the mayor to enter into a contract with Veterans Memorial Civic and Convention Center. Mr. President. Ms. Adams? I move that Ordinance 243-14 be passed on its first reading. Second. The motion of the second is to pass Ordinance 243-14 on its first reading. Is there any discussion? We'll have the clerk call the roll. Mr. Tevin? Yes. Ms. Adams? Yes. Mr. Glenn? Yes. Mrs. Miles? Yes. Mr. Nixon? Yes. Mr. Gordon? Yes. Mr. McClain? Yes. And Mr. Lowe? Yes. Ordinance 243 has been passed on its first reading by an 8 to 0 vote. Ordinance 244-14. <coughs> Authorizing the mayor to enter into a contract for the purchase of fuel for city vehicles. Mr. President. Ms. Adams. I move that Ordinance 244-14 be passed on its first reading. Second. The motion of the second is to pass Ordinance 244-14 on its first reading. Is there any discussion? I'll have the clerk call the roll. Mr. Tevin? Yes. Ms. Adams? Yes. Mr. Glenn? Yes. Mrs. Miles? Yes. Mr. Nixon? Yes. Mr. Gordon? Yes. Mr. McLean? Yes. And Mr. Lowe? Yes. Ordinance 244-14 has been passed on its first reading by an 8-0 to zero vote. Ordinance 245-14. Authorizing the mayor to enter into an agreement with GE Intelligence Platforms, Inc. for water and wastewater plant control software. Mr. President? Mr. McLean. I move that Ordinance 245-14 be passed on its first reading. Second. 
The motion and the second is to pass Ordinance 245-14 on its first reading. Is there any discussion? <coughs> Let the clerk call the roll. Mr. Tebbin? Yes. Ms. Adams? Yes. Mr. Glenn? Yes. Mrs. Miles? Yes. Mr. Nixon? Yes. Mr. Gordon? Yes. Mr. McLean? Yes. And Mr. Love? Yes. Ordinance 245-14 has been passed on its first reading by an 8-0 to zero vote. Ordinance 246-14. Authorizing the mayor to enter into a consent degree with U.S. EPA. Mr. President. Mr. McLean. I move that Ordinance 246-14 be passed on its first reading. Second. The motion of the second is to pass Ordinance 246-14 on its first reading. Is there any discussion? Mr. Mr. President. Mr. Tevin. Uh, this legislation is kind of uh, bittersweet. It ends uh, many, many years of discussions with the EPA on what the city of Lima must commit to to upgrade our sewer system. And I want to give uh, credit where credit is due to Gary Sheely and Mike Caprella and the Utilities Department, to the mayor and his leadership in the U.S. Conference of Mayors in helping educate our citizens as to what we were facing and, and what potentially uh, this could have cost us uh, for negotiating uh, protections for the city of Lima. And, and although I would rather see us pay no fine at all, minimizing that fine to the level that you have is, is very commendable. And uh, it will be nice to have this behind us and know what our future is relative to our sewer system the investment level required. Thank you for your hard work. Thank you, Mr. Tevin. Is there any further discussion? Mr. President. Mr. McLean. I would like to echo a lot that uh, Mr. Tevin said. If, you know, without our mayor dutifully working to get through the Council of Mayors and go and talk to numerous places, that he's he's been on the podium and preached and preached and preached that, you know, Lima, Ohio is something new. We're going to start a whole new era with the US EPA with this agreement. And uh, there, his effort, I commend. He worked very, very hard, along with Gary Sheely and, and, and our, our law, lawyers that we had. Are, they were very, very good. Uh, we could have been in a lot bigger mess than what we are. And it's been a long, long period of time. The last 10 years, we've been working with this. And I, I will say that I, as the utility chairman, I, I really appreciate everything that you've done, along with the director and, and Mike Caprella. And I tell you, I'm glad to have it off my back. <laughs> it's been a long, a long one. So I, I do appreciate your hard work. Thank you, Mr. McLean. Is there any further discussion? Mr. President. Mr. Glenn. I just have one other thing to say. And this is a very, very small amount compared to other cities and other counties. Uh, 49,000, and we had an opportunity here when the law director calls some of the cities out. It was up in the 100,000, so it's great. You know, are we happy? No, we're not happy for paying it, but it's a small amount, though. And like the other councils say, it takes a lot of work to get to that point. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Glenn. Um, I'm just going to comment because I remember when the concept of the fines and the upgrades and the whole issue. Um, came to council and um, yes it's been 10 plus long years trying to come to this resolution and I do appreciate all the hard work um, I will point out however that uh, there's a lot of hard work that has to be done once we start implementing uh, the changes that we have to make the cost is not going to be mm -hmm. unfelt right. Uh, there's going to be a, a lot of hard work uh, in monitoring our plan, the implementation of the plan, and some of the variables that uh, will dictate whether or not the plan can be modified with the EPA. And that's the trigger point that is unique to this agreement and makes it one of the first, or not one of the first agreement with the US EPA in the country is the fact that as uh, expenditures are forecast out, income levels, residency, customer base, and median uh, household income are all factors that get monitored and can change the ultimate specifics of the implementation. There are going to be tough decisions. There are going to be a lot of phone calls to us, to 
the administration in the coming years uh, because we're going to have to face rate increases and we've done a good job laying it out there that these are going to come but when we talk dollars and cents and percentages in the future it doesn't equate to the impact that a resident feels when they get their bill <coughs> and that's when all hell is going to break loose frankly okay but it is something that we simply have to do it is a far better plan a far more cost-effective plan than what could have been implemented by the US EPA um, so my hat's off to the work that's been done on it, but there's a lot of work that has to go forward. Um, you know, it, it's far past the time of opinions and everything else. It, it, we are paying <coughs> dollars, pennies on the dollar in fines, <coughs> actual fines to the U.S. government um, versus what other communities are. And fortunately, the dollars that this community is going to have to expend and that the customers on the sewer system are going to have to pay are going to go to real upgrades not fines uh, to, to the federal government so I hope this will get unanimous support is there any further discussion of the clerk call the roll mr. Tevin yes miss Adams yes mr. Glenn yes mrs. Miles yes mr. Nixon yes mr. Gordon yes mr. McLean yes and mr. Lowe yes Ordinance 246.14 has been passed on its first reading by an 8 to 0 vote. Ordinance 247.14. Amending Ordinance 252.13. Mr. President. Mrs. Miles. I move Ordinance number 247-14 be passed on its first reading. Second. The motion on the second is to pass Ordinance 247.14 on its first reading. Is there any discussion? I'll have the clerk call the roll. Mr. Tevin. Yes. Miss Adams. Yes. Mr. Glenn. Yes. Mrs. Miles. Yes. Mr. Nixon. Yes. Mr. Gordon. Yes. Mr. McLean. Yes. And Mr. Lowe. Yes. Ordinance 247 has been passed on its first reading by an 8 to 0 vote. Ordinance 248 14. Authorizing the mayor to enter into an agreement with the Allen County Board of Commissioners to process biosolids. Mr. President. Mr. McLean. I move that ordinance 248.14 be passed on this first reading. Second. The motion in the second is to pass ordinance 248.14 on its first reading. Is there any discussion? Mr. President. Mr. McLean. For those out there, this is an agreement between the county and the city to, uh, to process some biosolids. That the way the county does, there's a little different than the city, and um, this is gives us a way to not actually making a little money on the county but putting putting something back for the service that we give them for areas that are outside the city limits so thank you thank you mr mclean is there any further discussion i'll have the clerk call the roll mr tevin yes miss adams yes mr glenn yes mrs Miles. yes mr nixon yes mr gordon yes mr mclean yes and mr love yes Ordinance 248.14 has been passed on its first reading by an 8 to 0 vote. Ordinance 249.14. Adopting and approving the form of the nominating petition for city elected officials. Mr. President. Mr. President. Mr. Geiger. Uh, we uh, need an amendment to Exhibit A due to a Scrivener's error. Haha. <laughs> <laughs> the elusive Scrivener's yes, error. Yes, sir. Scrivener's error. The very top of the page, the first paragraph, the last words, Ordinance 250-14, should be Ordinance 249-14. You want to throw another one in place and draft up another ordinance so it's right? Um, no, I would just okay. uh, like to amend the exhibit and authorize a clean copy to be substituted. All right. Can I have a motion for that, please? So moved. Second. Thank you. The motion in the second is to amend the Exhibit A as stated by the Law Director. Is there any discussion on the amendment? All those in favor of that motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The motion carries. Ordinance 249-14. Who had the motion? Mr. Mr. President. Mr. Lowe. I move the Ordinance 249-14 uh, be passed on its first reading. As, as, amended. as amended. Second. The motion of the second is to pass Ordinance 249-14 on its first reading as amended. 
Is there any discussion? Mr. President. Ms. Adams. Uh, looking at this, the amended part, the first sentence up there, I thought during the discussions, the mayor's office, the auditor, and the law director, and the council president were also 25. No. They, st they were at 50? No, yeah. Because they're citywide. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Is there any further discussion? I'll have the clerk call the roll. Mr. Tevin? Yes. Ms. Adams? Yes. Mr. Glenn? Yes. Mrs. Miles? Yes. Mr. Nixon? Yes. Mr. Gordon? Yes. Mr. McLean? Yes. And Mr. Love? Yes. Ordinance 249-14 has been passed on its first reading by an 8-0 to zero vote. Miscellaneous business, Mr. Tevin. Yes, uh, just I'm looking at the next meeting. Uh, we will go into daylight savings time the day before the next meeting, correct? Yes. Yep. And, and you know, that comment that I made during the, the opening prayer uh, relative to the children in Halloween, when we, you know, the end of daylight savings time also brings another change it's, yep. it, uh, that could affect the safety of children. So I just ask that everyone please be, be aware and, and be extra observant. Uh, as these changes take place. That's all this evening. Thank you, Mr. Tevin. Ms. Adams. Thank you, Mr. President. A uh, couple items here. I'd like to refer to the Public Works Committee, Chapter 1409 of the Codified Ordinance. It's the special building criteria within the Design Review District. Um, a review of the chapter in itself, 1409, um, looking at the borders and boundaries and also uh, council approval of appointees. Second. The motion the second is to refer the uh, chapter 1409 of the codified ordinances of Lima to the Public Works Committee for discussion. <coughs> is there any discussion on the motion? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The motion carries. And the second item is refer to the Finance Committee uh, review of the purchasing policy. Second. Motion of the second is to refer the issue of the purchase, city purchasing policy to the finance committee. Is there any discussion? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. That's all. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Adams. Mr. Gillette. Yeah, got a few things there. First of all, I want to thank the, uh, we had a couple economic development coming in the area there. And I thank Ms. Adams. Not Ms. Adams. Amy for helping me out with some of the stuff there that we're going to need to do to make this project happen. So it's very exciting there. Also, I'm congratulate the Lima Warriors for coming to Lima Stadium. They had agreed on a deal there at Lima, so they could be Lima Warriors. And congratulate Ty Gordon, the coach of the Lima Warriors. And that's going to be really great to have them here at the Spartan Way there, the stadium. And I'm happy about that. So, and congratulations to you too. And uh, I was happy this weekend that we had a lot of folks went out uh, raising money for breast cancer. And it was great to see a lot of folks doing that. And uh, I know I had a lot of, we had people walking around our neighborhood, some people just doing laps, and had somebody had sponsored money, you know, walking through the neighborhood, uh, uh, sponsoring money to help people out with that. And also, we're going to be doing a little bit cleaning up on the back end of Union Street there. A lot of little stuff there before it starts snowing, and uh, we made a commitment to the folks that we're gonna get back there. Uh, we had a problem again, someone uh, dumping trash back there, and, uh, and it's just not acceptable. Now, I, and, I, and I told them over and over, you see anyone back there, take the tag number down, and we'll report to the police department. <coughs> and I wanted to let Amy know about the young lady who receiving the calls, Dion. She's doing an outstanding job there, and I appreciate her responding back, you make a call in there, she calling you back. Less than 30 or 40 minutes she called and said, we got that turned in, and I appreciate that so much. I think she's brand new there, the position there in that department, but she's doing a great job. I mean, I missed a beat. Every time I give her a call, she respond back. And I thank her so much for that. That's it. Thank you, Mr. Glenn. Mrs. Miles. I just have one thing here. I want to um, express my appreciation to the weekend crew of the uh, utilities department. 
I the post our mailman notify us of a, some gushing water in our neighborhood and and so my neighbor called me not knowing who to call so he called me and I uh, immediately called the um, looked on the website because I didn't know exactly the number so I looked on the website and looking for the number to for the um, weekend crew or at the hours crew and I did uh, contact someone and lo and behold I got a live person. You know, I was really impressed by that. I didn't have to press one for this, two for that, three for that. So I really appreciate there being somebody there to answer the phone. He did very quickly. Um, it ended up the water in our neighborhood had to be shut off. I wasn't pleased with that for three hours and right in the midst of my cleaning here. Uh -huh. So um, water was shut off. But the crew did a very good job. They came out uh, within an hour of, of me calling uh, and they took care of the situation. and. They did a really good job of, of taking care of the problem. Uh, and I'm thankful to the mailman who, not who notified the resident, the <coughs> neighbor that was close by of the water coming out. Otherwise, you know, I don't know how, how long that water would have been running like that. Uh, but it was a, a water main break here. And I'm really appreciative to uh, Gary Sheely and his staff for the quick response. And they did an excellent job. Uh, I happened to walk out and they talked to me about, you know, what, what needs to be done. and. Um, so two, two things I learned from this. One, I, I suggested to Gary that the uh, emergency number be put on the home page because I had to dig down a little bit to find the utilities website and then look for the number. So I've, I've suggested to him, he's going to look into it, to put all the emergency phone numbers for like the weekend or for after hours on the home page so that when you go to the city alignment's website, those numbers are easily accessible to residents and they don't have to be looking for it. The second thing was is during that three hours, I kept turning the water on. I knew the water was off, but I kept turning it on. My suggestions to residents is keep a bottle of water underneath your sink or something. You never know when your water may be shut off. So just get a plastic container and, and put water underneath there because during that three hours that my water was off, I need to wash my hands. I need to do a lot, a lot of different things. And, and so that would be my suggestion to residents. Just keep a, a bottle of water handy just in case that happens. You know, you never know when you may have to have your water shut off for emergency purposes or for whatever. So. But again, thanks to the utilities department. Do you flip light switches when the power's out? <laughs> I do. I, I do. I do. Yeah, so maybe I it's on. Maybe, it's on. maybe it's on. Mr. Gordon. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Um, thank you, Mr. Glenn, for mentioning the uh, the agreement between the Lima Warriors and the uh, um, Lima City Schools at Spartan Stadium. And uh, but more importantly, I wanted to thank Reverend Horton because I found out tonight at least somebody's listening <laughs> <laughs> and you you're getting you got what I'm saying you know uh, w without me preaching tonight um, you got what I'm saying so I appreciate you and with that I'll just say be good to each other thank you mr. president thank you mr. Gordon mr. McLean thank you mr. president uh, just a couple items the Northside Neighborhood Association will have their meeting tomorrow at 7 p.m. at st. Gerard's cafeteria um, I also would like to talk a minute about our safety services fund that we just spent a little money out today for the uh, police department. They needed a piece of uh, exercise equipment and it was due to uh, the people of Lima funding that. Um, when you get your water bill there's an area in there that you can actually give more money to certain things and this is one of them. And each year people do give to it, businesses give to it. And it's important that we have little funds like this so that the police department and the fire department can get some things that we may not have in the budget. So I ask everyone to look at their bills the next time and if they can give a little extra towards those funds to please do so. It does make a difference to our employees. You know, they, they really need um, some exercise equipment over there in the police department and I think maybe the fire department has some, some things that they probably do want too and this fund does come in handy when that comes around. So, uh, and please, Please watch out for our kids. You know, they dart out for Halloween right out between your cars. Uh, obviously, they're excited. They're more excited about going to get that piece of candy than where you're driving down the street. So please be careful. Please be careful those nights. And that's going to be uh, Thursday, uh, the 30th. Uh, I think it starts at 6 to 8 p.m. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. McLean. Mr. Lowe? Nothing this evening. Thank you. Um, Over the last couple of weeks, Lima City Council uh, has had meetings of Council of the Whole. And 
The purpose of those has been to go into executive session and interview candidates for the Civil Service Board. Um, we've had some very good candidates. Um, tough decisions have had to be made. Um, the process for making that appointment official requires just a simple motion. So if somebody wants to make a motion for the appointment of Sean Carpenter to the Civil Service Board, I'll entertain that motion. Mr. President. Mr. Lowe. I'd like to make a motion of the appointment to, of Sean Carpenter to the Civil Service Board. Second. Mr. President, um, it's, we need to be specific that it's to fill the unexpired term of uh, Reverend Lamont Lonford ending December 31st of 2015. Okay. Mr. President, Amend your motion, please. I would like to make a motion that Sean Carpenter fill the spot, the vacant spot on the Civil Service Board of the Lamont Lonford was the date again? December 31st, 2015. Uh, up until the position of December 31st, 2015. The vacancy. Is there a second to that? Second. The motion in the second is to appoint Sean Carpenter to fill the unexpired term of created by the resignation effective October 31st of current board member Lamont Monford and to fill the unexpired term until uh, December 31st, 2015. Is there any discussion on the motion? Um, I'm going to say something. I, this has been a very, very difficult uh, decision for a lot of variable reasons. Number one, uh, we had four very, very strong candidates that we interviewed and any of the four would have made an excellent choice for appointment to this unexpired term. Um, council, and I'll state, um, in our discussions it was a very, very close call. And frankly, there was not a clear majority, but there is a motion on the floor. Uh, and that's what will be voted on. Um, normally we vote on something like this and we have, for lack of a, a better way of putting it, a general consensus uh, that is a clear and defined consensus. Um, I have some concerns and we're going to have to watch very closely. Um, but. The motion's on the floor. I'm not sure exactly even now how I'm going to vote. So, if there's any further discussion. Mr. President. Mr. Tevin. Uh, I, I will agree with you. This has been a very difficult process. And the, the item that I struggle with is, uh, for my entire service on council, uh, we have never made a decision. Uh, or brought a, brought a candidate forward that did not have a majority of council. Uh, the dynamics of council changed when we eliminated a council seat and we're at an even number. Um, and, and that is, when I, when I look at how, when we move forward, uh, I don't know where it can be addressed, whether it's in council rules or whether it's yeah, I, I, it speaks, I mean, if you look at every meeting we have, it requires, for something to pass on the floor of council, it requires five council members. That's not what we're dealing with tonight. One person received more votes than the other. Uh, I'm not comfortable seeing uh, less than a majority of council make the decision, even as to what name we bring forward. So. Uh, I was a part of that process. I'm going to go ahead and vote tonight. Uh, and I, I've really gone back and forth in my mind. It, it's more of a process question to me relative to a majority of counselors 
and, and the opinions expressed on this issue. I, I understand your uh, frustrations with it, and I think there were a lot of frustrations in, in going through the process, but uh, the even number, this is probably the first time it's, it's really created an issue. I, I don't remember an issue where, where it's ended up like this, but it is, it, we are where we are, and, and I'm prepared to vote. Thank you. Is there any further discussion? Mr. President. Mr. Love. Um, the motion's on the floor, and what is held and said in executive session, I believe should stay in executive session. Whatever happened in there stays behind those doors, and I think we should just go ahead with the vote. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lowe. Is there any further discussion? Um, Mr. Lowe, I appreciate your comment, but um, the truth of the matter is I'm, I'm just not comfortable supporting it because of some other issues that are uh, surrounding it. I have concerns, and I thought it would be best to try to explain how the process worked and what my reasons for uh, not supporting the motion would be. So. Mr. President. Ms. Miles. As has been stated, this has been a very, very difficult process, uh, <coughs> um, a process that you know, with being a new council member was very, very new to me. Um, I, I, I thought about this particular um, issue a lot. And I have come to the conclusion that, you know, we've got a, the priorities. And for me, as I look at the total issues, a lot of the issues in this city and the things that we're battling, I chose not to battle this one here. Uh, and so, I, you know, in the spirit of not conformity, but in the spirit of unity, I will be voting for this. Okay. Thank you. Mr. President. Mr. McLean. Now, I've been on council for a few years, and I know when we went from nine to eight, that we had several discussions on what would happen if this happened. And, you know, we, we haven't had any instance that we've had that deadlock. We've always seemed to have been able to work our way through that, uh, maybe even in the effort of, of Mrs. Miles there. She, she uh, you know, I commend her for what she said. Uh, we as council have got to do what's best in these cases for the people that vote for us. It's not about votes, I guess. It's about the people that we serve. We're here to provide the best people that we can to work for these boards that are almost like volunteers. So, yes, it was not an easy path. We had a lot of discussion. We had a lot of fun. We laughed. We ate. But overall, we all grew. And I hope that someone takes something from this to make them understand this council needs to be as you said when we started this process, we need to have a s solid vote. Is there any further discussion? Mr. President. Mr. Glenn. I just have a couple things here because I, uh, I think I'm a senior city councilman here. And, and uh, yes, it's true. Yeah, I'm a city, senior city councilman here. Except for me, but go ahead. Except for you. You're right. But I've never been in a tenure ring like this before because it had been a lot of candidates I didn't never support, didn't want to support, okay, because I didn't like what they, what they was doing or what I read up on it. I feel they were ineligible, but I stuck by them. This is the first time since I've been on council that we brought up a candidate. We always go and support whoever we city council voted on and move on with it. And I never, I can go back to my record, I never, the ones I didn't like or dislike, I just just play team player and move on with it, you know. And then believe me, there's a lot of them came up through the ranks. Should have been on this. So, so if I didn't say that, whatever they say, we went on with it. And uh, I agree with Miss Miles. You know, we got to move on from this. We got to put this cat and mouse thing. We don't like, we don't like. You know, and, uh, and I'll be the first one to say that. 
and uh, we like it, don't like it, but that is what we got to do. We, get, we work for the people in this great city of Lima. We got a lot of work to do here. People want to work, people want to live. We try to keep people living here. They don't want to see this cat and mouse thing here. These folks put us in office to do a job for them. And, and I'm going to try to do the best I can for them about what we feel is right for them. So, but we need to just forgive and forget and move on. That's why I did for the last 14 years. When I see something in light and, and, and we came together in executive session, I went for it, took it on the cheap and move on. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Glenn. Is there any further discussion? Uh, yeah, Mr. Mr. President. Mr. Gordon. Um, this was a very interesting process to me, and the positive thing that comes out of the whole, the whole deal for me is that all four of the candidates that we interviewed were really great, and any one of those four could have could hold this position. Um, they all did a good job. They all impressed me, and I would have supported any one of the four when we come to this floor. So I just want to let that be known. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Mr. McLean, I'm, I'm going to, I guess, rebut your comment. Um, my vote, and you're right, it's our job to do and represent the people that <coughs> live in the city, and I intend to do that because I believe there was a different candidate that was the best candidate for the position. <coughs> you're entitled to your vote. I respect that. I respect everyone's vote here. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm not able to support the motion because I don't think it's the best choice we could make. Okay? So. Mr. President? Mr. McLean. And, you know, there is no one tells me how to vote, and I will vote the same way. Again, I'm not at trying to ask you who you're voting for or why you're voting. It's your prerogative. But I'm saying we're here for solidarity. Correct. We're trying to, to get things to work together. And I think that's our, our purpose with this, and that's what we started when we first went into that room. We went with that intent. Thank you. Thank you. Well, have the clerk call the roll. Mr. I didn't know you were going to do a roll yeah. call. Mr. Tebbin? No. Ms. Adams? Yes. Mr. Glenn? Yes. Mrs. Miles? Yes. Mr. Nixon? No. Mr. Gordon? Yes. Mr. McLean? Yes. And Mr. Lowe? Yes. Motion carries by a six to two vote. Okay. Thank you. Um, under other miscellaneous business, I have nothing further. Mr. President, I move that Lima City Council adjourn until Monday, November the 3rd at 7 p.m. in these chambers. Second. The motion on the second is that Lima City Council will adjourn until November 3rd at 7 p.m. in these chambers. Is there any discussion on the motion? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? The motion carries. We are adjourned. No.